Hey guys, Prepared Wanderer outside today and we're going to be looking at uh, another part of the budget bushcraft series and this part is going to be looking at budget backpacks so stick around. Alright, so when I started this budget bushcraft series the whole point of this thing was uh, so that people could actually take a look at some different methods and equipment uh, to get out in the woods a little bit more and not worry about money because um, all of us I think are concerned about cash these days and I love expensive equipment just as much as the next guy um, but I also like things that are cheap um, that work and uh, sometimes you just don't need a $300 backpack to to do the same job as a $50 backpack but you know it takes a lot of money sometimes to figure that out you have to go through a lot of different uh, different types of equipment. You have to test things out and see what works for you. You have to look at reviews, and it can be time consuming. So I picked three bags that I own um, and that I feel are great values and all are at a different capacity and all have a different purpose. So, so the first one I want to take a look at is this big monster right here. This is the Marine Corps ILBE. It's made by Proper, um, designed by Arteryx. Uh, this is not the current uh, configuration or generation of this pack for the Marine Corps. They have a new one out, the FILBE, I believe. So this is older than that. Um, but this thing is a workhorse, and it can be found at many different locations, including Army-Navy stores, gun shops, uh, gun shows, eBay, online, whatever. So a lot of different places to find this thing and it is huge. And the reason I picked this one is because this is my dedicated overnight bag for uh, fall winter camping. Uh, fall and winter I tend to take more gear because I need to stay warmer and this pack can do that. So I can certainly haul all that stuff. Now this pack is a top loading backpack if you're not familiar with it. it. has a drawstring closure at the top and it is one gigantic pouch. You can see inside there. It's huge. Now on the front of this one I have attached a uh, sustainment pouch on the Molly and that is my dedicated food bag and, and just things I need to get to quickly and I keep that on the outside of the pack and just makes things getting to them a lot easier. Also this pack has an enormous top lid. Let me flip this around so you can see it. It's just gigantic. There's a lot of stuff you can put inside there. It adds a lot of capacity. Now Sometimes I'll actually take that top lid off and I will uh, just use the pack without it because I don't need the extra capacity and that's another way of slimming down the weight on this thing. Now one thing, one thing I've done with this backpack is I've actually uh, gone through and stripped out all the extra stuff on it to help with weight and I want to read some specs on this thing real quick so uh, it lists at 4,500 cubic inches pretty big. It's a 725D Cordura it weighs in at 8.65 pounds uh, stock and new and the measurements are 32 by 18 by 10 so it is definitely a monster pack and it is very robust it is adjustable you can actually detach this part right here and actually move these uh, shoulder straps down I have these at the top position for my, for my torso length it has some nice padding in here with channels for air and has a really beefy hip belt and uh, back padding on this thing. Also, There's also rods that run up each side of this that help provide you know the support that you need for your back. This is just it really carries weight very very well. It's a very comfortable pack and there are upgrades that you can do this thing. Um, you can certainly take a lot of the extra straps off and cut them down like I've done. Uh, you can also remove this belt and replace it with a Hill People gear belt. Um, I've heard good things about that as far as um, actually improving the feel of this bag. 
Now why this bag is is a budget bag is because it's Now why I consider this bag a budget bag is because you, you can find these things pretty cheap. Um, anywhere from 50 to 75 dollars all the way on up to probably a couple hundred dollars. I think if you're spending over a hundred you're probably spending too much. Uh, so spend your time shopping around, see if you can find one at a decent price and in good shape. Um, you know, you have to remember these things are military issue and a lot of times when they come back after being issued to a soldier, they're not in very good shape. They've been really put through the test and uh, there'll be a lot of wear points and they'll be dirty and holes in them and stuff like that. So you wanna check out the bag before you purchase it. Uh, make sure it's, it's clean and it's serviceable. Now things that I've done to lighten the load on this pack, there were actually extra side straps here. I took those off. There was, uh, I believe, one, two, three, maybe two. Yeah, three, actually three extra ones here. I don't need that many side straps. There's also a panel that's set right here that was a pass behind that had Molly on the front of it. I felt that was overkill. I'm not going to put a, attach a lot of molly to this bag because it's already big enough. Um, all, what I wanted is just you, using the side pocket to put the head of my axe in and then passing the handle through. So I didn't need all that extra molly on the side. I felt that was overkill and that helped lighten the load quite a bit. I also removed the uh, interior radio pocket that sits in here and that clips out and then I cut off all the extra straps and that helps lighten the load. And on the front of this pack, if I remove this sustainment pouch, there was a panel that actually sat here and that uh, acted as a, uh, a way of holding the assault pack. And I, I was not going to attach the assault pack to this because I felt that just added way too much weight, especially on the back of the bag. Um, so I went with cutting that off and then just getting a sustainment pouch and attaching that to the molly and then now I have a very lightweight quick access pouch on the outside of the pack and that's all I really need and it works great I've been using this for years as my winter backpack um, I can carry a tent full slice sleeping bag food all the stuff I need for a weekend uh, winter camping and it works perfectly and you can see it's still in really good shape uh, it just it, it's very durable and very overbuilt. So great backpack for an overnight bag. Now these two packs are a little bit smaller, as you can see. This one, this is the LA Police Gear Atlas 24, and this is the Field Line Alpha Ops. Now I would consider the Alpha Ops to be purely a day pack. It's it's a small pack. And then the 24 um, easily can be a summer overnight bag and uh, used for two or three days, no problem. It's, it's huge. It has a lot of space in it um, and definitely can handle it. So let's take a little bit closer look at those. All right, so the Atlas 24. It uh, retails for about $54.99. It's 900D polyester. The dimensions are 20 by 16 by 10. It's 3,200 cubic inches and it weighs in at about 4.2 pounds. So not the lightest pack in the world, uh, but as you can see, this thing is gigantic for the size it is and for the money that it costs. $54 pack and you can do, this could be your dedicated overnight bag, especially for warm weather camping, no problem. And um, let's just take a look at a couple of the features on this thing. What I like about this pack is that it is a clamshell design that opens all the way up. And I have this set up right now for some air, for summer hammock camping. I've got my hammock, my bug net. I've got my possibles pouch with all my fire starting equipment and paracord and all that extra stuff. I've got 
my tarp in this back panel. I got the Skarma bush knife. Got my tow axe pot. I still have tons of room in here for clothes, food, no problem. Also, the, the Alice 24 has these nice mesh pockets that can be accessed from the top or the bottom. So no matter which way you're facing, you can get into it. And I've just got some, some of my equipment that goes for my hammock in here. This bag is set up very similar to the Rush 511 Rush series, but much cheaper in price. It does have side pockets. which canteen fits easily into. Now you're not gonna be able to get a 32 ounce uh, Nalgene in here. It's just, it's too narrow. It'll fit, but it'll be very, very tight. So I like the canteen fitting in here because it's a little bit narrower profile and flatter, and it just fits in this pocket perfectly. So if you've got a couple canteens, you are set. Also, the Atlas 24 has a very nice hydration pocket on the outside of the pack that my three liter uh, source hydration bladder fits easily into. And also has a frame sheet, which definitely helps with rigidity and support. Now, it's not the uh, most rigid frame sheet I've seen. And it, I think it could definitely use an aluminum stay to help with uh, support. But for $54, I, I can't complain. I could certainly upgrade that with a different frame sheet if I wanted to, or possibly even uh, make a frame sheet and put an aluminum stay in here. But that would certainly help with support. Nice padding on the back. Drain hole down here for your hydration bladder. A detachable waist belt, which will help with stability. Not really gonna help with support. Uh, it's not meant to, it's, it's for stability more than anything. It has a, uh, a Y-shaped harness, so it doesn't have load lifters like the larger backpack does, but it is still a very comfortable ride. And then just some of the other features of this bag, there is a, a fleece-lined pocket for your sunglasses or your cell phone. Top pocket here is divided. Got my first aid kit, my headlamp. I've got uh, some cord and a beaner that I, I hang my uh, pack off of. And it has this enormous admin panel that I haven't even filled up yet. So you got radio pockets, pen slots behind that, keeper rings for keys or lights. Another zipper pocket behind here. And then two pockets on the front of the pouch for longer items. So really a, a nice, well thought out bag. Um, and you know, it's under 60 bucks. So how can, how can you go wrong with something like that? And this is something that actually I feel would make a great uh, not only bushcraft bag, overnight bag, uh, it would be a great truck bag, get home bag, or even a bug out bag if that's what you're into. So a lot of possibilities with this thing. Um, and the price is extremely nice. Also has a pouch down here, which is great for like a flashlight. And then you do have webbing on the bottom so you can attach a bedroll if you need to. All right, last but not least is this uh, Fieldline TAC Ops bag or Al uh, Alpha Ops bag. These um, can be found at a lot of your big box retailers like Walmart. Very inexpensive bag, under $26. Uh, the specs on these are, um, let's see, 1400 cubic inches, 17.25 by 12.5 by 6.5 inches in dimension. And then it has a shipping weight of two pounds, but I think it's probably under that. That's the shipping weight, I don't, so 
uh, maybe with packaging and things. I couldn't find a, a dry weight on this thing. But it's set up very similar to the Rush 511 12, the Rush 12 bag. Hydration pocket, two mesh pockets in the lid, so you can organize your gear that way. But what makes this different than the 511 bag is it actually has a water bottle pocket sewn on the side, which is really nice because that is a feature I love. I love pockets on the outside of packs for water bottles. I wish the LAP, uh, LA Police Gear Pack had those because when you're traveling and you just want to get your water out quickly, it's a great you know grab and go kind of thing. It has side compression straps. There is no frame inside this bag and it's very floppy when it's empty. Um, what I like to do is I like to put a piece of uh, closed foam cell padding in here that I use for my kneel pad and then also uh, I usually keep a tarp or something in here so that helps uh, kind of build up the, the rigidity of this thing. But this makes a really nice inexpensive day pack. It has a lot of features to it. You got a zipper pocket up here. You have the admin panel on the front, which is very similar to the LA Police Gear, and of course very similar to the 511 Rush series. Pen pockets, slot pockets, you know, very, very similar setup. All right, guys, I hope this helped. Um, I know it's just a real quick overview of three different bags that really not a lot of in-depth information, but I wanted to show you three budget bags that would that um, I feel are decent quality very easy to get and they do the job well so of course there's tons of options on the market these days you know if you really want to get into going down the rabbit hole of uh, military surplus there is all kinds of stuff from all different countries um, and I've tried a lot of them and the big backpack the ILBE I found is the best out of any military surplus I've found for large backpacks. It's a lot more comfortable than an Alice pack or an Alice large. It's more comfortable than any of the foreign military surplus I've tried. It has a very nice design to it. And since it was designed by Arteryx, I think that speaks volumes. That is a great company and they really know what they're doing when it comes to design. And I think they nailed it with the ILBE. It's not the lightest pack in the world. Um, super heavy but you know it's uh you can definitely downsize it by cutting some stuff off of it and make it your own and that's what i like to do with my gear so all right guys i'm gonna get out of here uh thanks for uh tuning in the channel again and um we'll see you next time on the prepared wanderer